Brothers and sisters, has there ever been a time when you really blew it? I mean really blew it big time. Maybe you made a really poor decision. Perhaps you let someone down who was depending on you. It could be that you didn't have all the facts and you acted too hastily and, and therefore blew it big time. Maybe you wanted to say something so badly that you were going to do anything possible to get it. You push and you shove that square peg into that, that circular hole so well, and in doing so, you make the biggest mess of things imaginable. Has this ever been you? I know it's been me. The truth is, every one of us has been there one time or the other. Maybe you're there right now. And when you were in that predicament, didn't you long for another chance, a second chance, another opportunity? You were so frustrated with yourself that you kept messing up, that you beat up yourself. You kept on blaming yourself. You couldn't see yourself as somebody who could possibly do things right. And you yearned for that opportunity to turn back the clock so that you could make the whole thing right again. But of course, we can't go back in time. We long for that reconciliation. We wish that all those pieces could be put back together. What we wish for is redemption and restoration. Now, what makes our gospel lesson today in John 21 such a blessing to us is because in the text, we see that Jesus has loved those he called so much that even when they blow it, and they did, even when they let him down, or fail him, or deny him, he doesn't deny them. But he rather calls them to his loving, merciful arms. See, Jesus is a Lord of second chances. And as we heard, the risen Christ, the risen Christ Jesus, restores his disciples through fellowship and then renews them in their call to follow him. Now, our text shows a loving and forgiving, faithful Jesus. And our text also shows a group of disciples who are restored in that same Christ Jesus. Just take a look at these guys who were disciples for a moment. Time and again, they showed themselves to be weak and lousy at being a disciple. The, the very purpose that Jesus called them, they weren't very good at doing that. They repeatedly doubted him. They were always slow to understand his teachings, and they never seemed to get it. The list documenting their follies is actually pretty quite lengthy. Uh, from failing to cast out evil spirits, for not understanding Jesus' teachings, falling asleep on the night that Jesus said, stay awake and watch, stay on guard. And he ended up being arrested because they fell asleep and didn't watch. And then they didn't believe the women coming back from the tomb who said that Jesus wasn't in the tomb on Easter, even though he told them this was going to happen. The, the list goes on and on, and I could keep saying more. But in our text, when Jesus comes to these disciples again, they didn't find themselves on the receiving end of punishment. They found themselves restored in Christ Jesus. We are told that Jesus came for the purpose of fellowshipping with them. The text says that they had a horrible night of fishing. They didn't catch anything at all. But the risen Lord blessed their efforts with an overabundance of fish. We see that their work bears fruit only when their efforts are blessed by the Lord. When they finally got the big haul to shore, they found a loving and caring Jesus preparing breakfast for them and then feeding them. See, in that day, first century Palestine, there was no greater display of fellowship than eating with a person. And 
Jesus fed them, knowing all their flaws, knowing all their missteps. But instead of casting them out because of their unworthiness, Jesus came to them again and again. And by inviting them to eat in his presence, Jesus was restoring to them their identity as disciples. Their sins were forgiven and forgotten. His disciples were restored in Christ. And then the scripture following our text is another wonderful example of the Lord's love on an individual level as well. Um, this is an interaction between Jesus and Simon Peter. At the time, Peter, there, there is no doubt, he was an absolute broken man. We recall at the beginning when, the beginning of this message when I asked, how many have you blown? I said, I've blown it. Peter, he blew it. He continued to blow it, and then he blew it three big times right before this happened. Throughout the Gospels, Peter was the zealous one, the one who always promised to defend Jesus. He was the one that said, all others may fall away, Lord, but I never will. He was the one that was when asked, who, who do people say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But when Jesus was arrested, Peter denied that he even knew him. He denied him three times. Peter loved the Lord, but he just let Jesus down big time. He really blew it. And the guilt, the guilt from this was just eating him alive. He wished that he could have stood by his beloved Lord, his beloved Christ, and wished that he could have that second chance. He wished at that time that he could be restored in Christ. But in spite of all Peter's shortcomings and missteps, Jesus made sure that Peter knew what a gracious and merciful God he really was. After they had caught the great load of fish, John recognized that it was Jesus on shore. And upon seeing his Lord, Peter was so anxious to get out to see him as possible, as quickly as possible, that when he jumped in the water, he swam a hundred yards to shore. When Jesus asked for the fish, it was Peter who jumped in the boat, anxious to serve his Lord and make up for what he had done. And in verses 15 through 17, Peter's brokenness was put back together. In spite of what Peter had done, Jesus renewed Peter's most blessed calling. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter said yes. And Jesus told him, feed my lambs, tend my sheep. Jesus had called Peter and the other disciples to be his spokesmen, to be his mouthpieces, and to care for God's children by proclaiming God's word to them. And Jesus let Peter know that he was still going to serve God in that most blessed way. And just to make sure Peter really understood how complete Christ's forgiveness is, Jesus told Peter three times that his calling was still blessed by Christ. Three times. He was still a fisher of men. Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus forgave Peter three times. Peter was a broken man, but by God's grace and mercy, he was now restored in Christ. So now what about you? What about the brokenness of this world in 2022? We see it everywhere. We see people going through life without a clue as to what's really important. They find their security in their finances or their status. They seek to live a life of, of self-satisfaction, of self-centeredness. They have no room for Christ in their lives. It's a matter of time before they too are broken and they too are in need of the Lord. And worse yet, 
We are incapable of pleasing the Lord in our own efforts. We've made the bad decisions. We've let down someone we love. We've even let down the Lord. And at times, we have chosen jobs, dates, spouses, and made many significant decisions in life but didn't take time to consider God's will. At times our focus can be so captured by the blessings and trials that we have in our lives that we lose sight of his word and his plans for our lives. We've all been there. We, we've all done many of these things. And it all too often ends problematic for us. We wish we had listened to the Lord. We wish that we would have trusted in the Lord instead of our own efforts. We long to be restored in Christ. But, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the blessing that you have today in God's Word. Just as Jesus came to his disciples to restore them, and just as Jesus came to Peter to restore him, Jesus also comes to you to restore you. Jesus came to earth for one reason, and that was to pay for your sins and mine. Jesus came for your forgiveness. When Jesus was on that cross, he could have come down at any time. After all, he was God. But he chose to suffer and die because on that cross, because Jesus knew you and Jesus loved you. Jesus was not going to leave this world without completely restoring you. You are precious in Jesus' sight. Jesus loves you more than you could possibly understand. Jesus loves you every bit as much as he loved those same disciples. And Jesus restores you today, just as he restored them. Even after we fail time and time again, Jesus faithfully reaches to us and restores us every time. The absolution of your sins that we hear in church every service at the beginning of worship is our restoration in Christ. When the Lord's Supper is celebrated here at the altar and he comes to you with and under the bread and wine, you are restored in Christ. When you hear his word of forgiveness and mercy proclaimed, you are restored in Christ. You attend a Bible study, you read his word at home or in your personal devotion times, you are restored in Christ. Your baptism made you his, and he is in you, and you are in him. He will never forsake you. He knows, and he forgives. So, even though we, like Peter and, and the other disciples, at times we've been embarrassed, Oh no, what are people going to think of me? We've been afraid. Oh no, what's going to happen to me? Or it just wasn't worthy of our time because we had something else that we wanted to do. We haven't witnessed for Christ. But Jesus is never embarrassed or afraid or will never take the time to claim you as his child. In spite of all our shortcomings and our missteps, he restores us through fellowship in him, in his word, and through his sacraments. The risen Lord calls broken disciples to come to him again and again, and to be filled with his word, so that they might go out into the world to bring others to restoration in Christ. Thanks be to God. At this time, we will continue our worship with the prayer hymn that follows in the bulletin, hymn 923, Almighty Father, Bless the Word. <laughs> 